guys, welcome back to Keep It Anonymous, the most edifying podcast in the world. And I'm joined here today with Julia Ibrahim. Thank you, Julia, for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. So my first question for you is just tell us a little bit more about you, who you are. Yeah, um, so I'm Julia Ibrahim. Um, I'm a sophomore, well, going into junior year at NC State University in Raleigh, um, studying biology. I grew up in the Coptic Orthodox Church, so that's where a lot of my background is going to be coming from. Um, but yeah. Great. So today we're talking about being selfless in a selfish world. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question for you is, um, when it comes to selfishness, selfishness, how would you define it? I would define selfishness as trying to fulfill your own needs at the expense of others, not instead of others. Um, I think those can be uh, confused, but I think that someone who's selfish is really willing to do whatever it takes for their own satisfaction, and that's usually at the expense of others. So when you say instead of others versus the expense of others, what's the difference between the two and how do you kind of find that balance? So I would say like to give an example, if I really wanted like a good grade in the class, knowing that I could throw off like the class average and then people wouldn't get the curve that they deserved. Being a selfish person, I would cheat, do whatever it takes, like bring in a copy of like an old exam, like whatever, um, so that I could get a good grade for myself at the expense of like the rest of the class possibly not getting a a curve or whatever that means for like a boost in their grade. Um, being selfish or looking at your own needs without an influence of other people's needs would be just like, I want this flavor candy like at the grocery store. Um, they have more of it for other people. I wouldn't define that as selfishness. Mm -hmm. I think that's just like preference. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. I think it's very, um, there's a, I think like there's a very fine line between the two. Mm -hmm. I think when you're doing stuff for yourself instead of doing things for others, it's more of like a pri prioritization thing. Yeah. What do you prioritize? Do you prioritize, um, you know, things for others or in this moment you prioritize, prioritize something for yourself? Whereas doing things, um, whereas like doing things at the expense of others is like, you know, it's going to hurt the people around you. You know that it's going to bring them down, but you still do it. Yeah. Regardless. I think that there's different perspectives. I think that's one way of looking at it. Um, it can be something as small as like, we wanted to record in this study room versus I wanted to record in like a different one. And then I went with this one because you wanted it or as big as like, what I'm about to do is really going to hurt this person. So I'm not going to do it, even though it'll hurt me if I don't, you know what I mean? So I think one way of looking at it is like, um, prioritization, uh, putting everyone else above myself. But I think that 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 can become more of the concept of like self-sabotage, um, kind of like neglecting your own needs. Whereas I think the definitions of selfishness and selflessness and love are really intertwined. Um, as a Christian, we're called to love everyone around us. We don't have to necessarily know them. Love is not conditional. Um, and I can also apply that to the concept of selflessness. I don't have to know you to want to give you something that like is not one of my top preferences but for you it is you know what I mean um so I don't think it has to do kind of like with prioritization but more just it reflects on you as a person it reflects on your character how you would treat others so how important do you think selflessness is in today's world I think it's extremely important um looking at every aspect of today's life um I think that we get everything that we want. It's right at our fingertips. There's enough for everybody. We don't understand the concept of waiting or delayed gratification or not just not having something accessible to us. We don't understand that as Americans um, and in the Western culture. So I think that it's extremely important, especially now that I see none of it. For the most part, 90% of the time, I don't see any of it. Um, I see most of it in church, but when we're looking at like outside of church like in our day-to-day -day lives especially in like the corporate world or even like on a college campus where everything is so competitive and you're like applying to grad schools i think that that's something that's really needed and i don't see it a lot in today's world so how would you as an individual kind of bring that idea of, sel of selflessness and that um, behavior to the people around you to bring it to others to take yeah. on i think that preaching what it means and the significance of it is enough for someone to want to embody that character. Um, for me, for example, this is something like a topic that I learned about fairly recently. So I can say that before I ultimately was living a selfish life just because I was prioritizing my own needs. So I think we can associate really easily selfishness with like they're a bad person, like they want to like prey on everyone's downfall, but that's not necessarily what it means. It just means that you're not looking out for others and you don't have to be a bad person to do that. 
um, you just kind of have to like broaden your scope and focus on others essentially it's not that complex but I think that by telling others that like look like there's a lot of problems in today's world your interpersonal relationships are not as fulfilling as they could be divorce rates are like severely like inclining I think that like applying that to everything that we see today and the importance of it and like what it means to include that in a relationship and see the effects of it is enough for someone to be like yeah I'm sold because that's how I embodied it it wasn't just like I chose to do that you made a really good point about how selfishness is not just like people being bad Mm -hmm. and I agree with that and I think it's one of those things that kind of creeps up it comes from like I also like I think the root of it is pride at the end of the day you take a pride in yourself and you say no like I'm better than others and because I'm better than others then I can put myself before others I can see that whereas if you take more of a humble approach to life it kind of forces you to be selfless because you can't be humble and then say no like I deserve it. I deserve all these things like no it's me first because mm-hmm. they, they, don't, they don't go hand in hand they're completely um, mutually exclusive so I think the like the underlying problem with selfishness is pride it's not necessarily like you know its own thing and I think that goes with a lot of um, things wrong and that's a lot of sins is that there are like three or four things that everything is like kind of driven by so I think pride is what drives um, selfishness totally yeah um one thing I can relate that to a specific example is like um if you look at a relationship between like a parent and a child and they like the parent is instilling something in the kid they want them to learn a lesson they're telling them to like go clean their room and the kid's like why can't we like hire someone to clean the house like take Mm. care of that for us and the parent's like well that's how I was raised that's how you're gonna do it I think that also goes along with what you're saying like pride and not willing to like I feel like in the head of the parent that's like I I had to do this and I didn't like it so you have to do this and I think that we can kind of relate that to each other like even a relationship like a friendship with like me and you for example like that that can come down to like the the root which is pride yeah, I mean, I'll say with the parent example, I think it's a little bit more complex. Yeah, I can I think see with, that. With parents and kids, the parents also trying to teach the kids, like, the purpose of a parent is to teach your kid, you know, what's right, what's wrong, mm-hmm. you know, how to live, you know, a life. And sometimes you have to force your kid to do things that they don't really want to do. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I, I see what you're saying that sometimes pride can be the reason why. I think it's a lot more about intention. Obviously, the action itself is kind of irrelevant compared to the intention of the action you're doing. So if you intend for the reason, for, we'll use the parent-child example, if the reason why you're telling your kid, no, you have to clean your own room, is because it's for their own benefit, because they have to learn how to take responsibility and how to, you know, take care of themselves and be clean human beings, that's one thing. Yeah. But if it's, you know, to be like, oh, no, just because I did it, then you have to do it. If that's the mindset, then I think that's where, you know, the, there's the kind of distinction right. between something that's selfish and something that's just like, you're trying to teach a lesson. Can I argue with you? Go I'll give a better it. example because okay. I don't think that was a good example. Um, in elementary school, I I vividly remember this. I remember um, wanting to like hang out with my friends or like plan something where we could hang out outside of school and then being like, um, well, my mom said I have to find my own ride or my mom said she can drop me off and then I have to figure out my own ride. And I remember thinking like, my mom would never put me in that position where it, like my mom would never be available and tell me no to something like that. So I remember thinking like, that's, that's weird. Like your parents shouldn't do that. That's someone that you should rely on to like cover for you. It's not a 50, 50 relationship, like that, that kind of idea. Um, so relating back to that, back to the point that I stated before, I think something like that, where like, if you do have a parent that's available in that moment and they're telling you like, no, you have to organize your own ride because they want to instill in you like responsibility, like planning, um, figuring out your own plans, things like that. I think that the idea of selfishness kind of takes over that. I don't, I don't think at that point it's a lesson. I think it's become like most likely like nine times out of 10, that parent was raised by a parent who did the same thing to them and they didn't like it. That made it a lot more complex to go out and made it a lot more difficult. So I think that because they had to go through that, you can love your kid as, as much as you love your kid, but you kind of want them to feel the same thing and it's not a good feeling. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean by that. Yeah. And I think again, there's a time and place for everything. Like when the kid's 10, maybe not the right time for that, but when they're 14, 15 Mm -hmm. about to get a car, maybe that's a time for that, you know? Yeah. Or even when they have a car, I mean, at that point it's completely up to them. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think again, like there's a progression. So obviously I'm not a parent, so I don't know how parenting works, but, um, there's, I feel like that's where that fine line is. That fine line is, well, what's actually selfish and what's, not. So I think that's why it goes back to the intention. 
Because if your intention is out of pride, out of selfishness, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, that's what caused you to make that decision. So then you're, you're going to have that continued behavior of all of your decisions come from that. And that affects, obviously, every other relationship in your life. Yeah. So I think that's why when it comes to selfishness, it's not like an isolated event. There's obviously events that you do that are selfish, but that living a life of selfishness is not just one thing. It's one thing that compounds into another, into another. And it's kind of like a series of behavioral actions that cause someone to be, just become a selfish person. And so we're talking about, you know, how can you be selfless in a world that's full of selfishness? You look everywhere around you. I mean, the whole, like the, the whole entire yeah. basis of society is, you know, do what's good for you, mm. you know, block others out. This whole, like it's an, it's an isolative type of mindset right. where it's isolate yourself, do what's good for you. Like I got to do what's good for me where, you know, there's a fine line for that. Obviously you have to put yourself first. You have to, you know, do what's good for you, but you have to find where is that line where that crosses into, no, I'm hurting other people. Yeah. So I'd like to ask you, where is that line between, you know, self care or self love? I hate that term, but I'll talk about that in a second versus like, you know, just where does that kind of spill over into selfishness? Yeah. I would say that for me personally, I feel like when I feel like I'm becoming selfish or I'm acting in a selfish way in a situation is when I start only thinking about my perspective of things. I don't think I'll give you an example. Um, let's say like I wanted to go get lunch at like Bad Daddy's today and then Monica wanted to go get lunch at like McDonald's. I think that being selfless versus selfish um, in that scenario would be me completely disregarding that the fact that what she wants is not what I want um, and just being like it, it doesn't matter like I really don't care to hear what you have to say this is what I want to do so if we don't do this I won't be happy I'm not going to be okay with that whereas being selfless is even if we do end up going to the restaurant that I want to go to being selfless is taking the time to realize that that's not what she wants she wants something else maybe we like figure out that oh she actually is down for mine and mine was a better option and she like was actually really craving burgers and then we plan to go to mcdonald's like another day so i think that applying that to like a real world scale like a bigger scale a, a more general way of thinking about it is it, it's not really like start and end it's not what solution did i get to from the situation where there was a conflict and it was resolved to be like always the other person's want over my want i think it's more along the way and this is for both parties involved i feel like we brought it to like a point where i'm selfish assuming that the other person is not thinking of or selfless thinking about the other person is not thinking about me at all mm. so like we're assuming right now that th in this scenario i'm doing all the thinking about like where do they want to go and they're only thinking about where they want to go they don't they're not thinking about me i think we su should switch it to the more functional relationship would be where we're both thinking about each other. We're both acting selfless. So from point A to point B, we're going from conflict to re resolution along the way. We're both regarding each other. We're both thinking about each other. So we, when we get to the point where we make a decision, it's ultimately going to be what only one person wanted, but we're both going to be content with that. And I think that that's why I said in the beginning that selflessness and love are very, very, very intertwined. You're not selfless because you get a benefit out of it. You're selfless because it's out of love. That's out of a place of love in your heart. Um, so this is completely unrelated. But ultimately, I would say that being selfless is the key to happiness. That's a very, like, it's a big stretch. But I would say being selfless is the key to happiness because you're never going to be not content. If anything, you're teaching yourself how to be disciplined and be like, no, even if I don't get what I want, I'm happy that they're happy. Genuinely, not like... Yeah, because I'm like course. above everyone. Yeah. And I agree. And I think, you know, we're talking a lot about relationship with another person. Kind of sh to shift it more into like a personal, like with myself. I feel like a lot of times we can be selfish with ourselves. And that's okay. where this idea of self love comes from. Yeah. That I have a lot of strong opinions about. Um, I think this, there's a, bi a big movement about self love and loving yourself and uh, self care and all these things. And I think there are, first off, to put it very frank, I think the way the movement is in current day society is just not Christian under any circumstances. But I think there are aspects of it that are completely valid. Um, obviously, if you know, you're know you sick or you're tired and you want to stay in, stay in. No one's going to stop mm -hmm. you, you know? But it becomes to a point where it's self-obsession. 
And I think that's kind of where I have my issues with it, where people kind of obsess over themselves and obsess over their needs and their wants. I can see that. So how can I as an individual stay away from that trap of obsessing over my needs and my, and my wants while still maintaining, you know, positive self-care? I think that we can separate um, this idea of like everything I do has an effect on other people and selflessness. I think that it's easy to think like, oh, selflessness, everything has to be about other people. Whereas like if I think about myself like one time, like that's not okay. I think we should separate those two ideas. Um, as long as you're like thinking, it's kind of like putting a lens on. So like if mm. I'm wearing glasses, I put this new lens on. It's the way that you're literally shifting your mindset. So now I'm looking at everything through like this new pair of glasses, like 2020 vision. The, the way that I approach decision making, the way that I am approaching my interpersonal relationships is completely skewed. And a lot of times when you have this new mindset, it's not going to be like everything is apparent. Like, let's say like I'm adopting this new idea of selflessness and I'm like talking to you. You're not going to be able to notice like everything. Like, it's not like I'm going to be like, no, like here, you, you like my car, like have it. Like, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be like more quiet. I feel like. Um, go, go ahead. I'm not, I'm not sure about, about that because I feel like people will see the, it's the same way. Like when, people, like you said, like you put on Christ, people will see that. And obviously selflessness is, is an aspect of that. So, and again, like there's a, it's a little bit off topic, but I'll relate it. But like, for example, you think of the fruit of the spirit, it's not called the fruits of the spirit. It's called the fruit. It is one fruit and it's all of these attributes, okay. love, joy, peace, all these things. So like in order to have selflessness, what do you have to have? You have to have love. In order to have love, what do you have to have? Peace, joy. Mm -hmm. So they all come together as a package. That's right. why I feel like you might not see, you obviously can't read the person's mind, but you'll be able to see through their actions that no, they're living this, this godly life and self selflessness is within that. Humility is the center of that. Yeah. You, you know? will be able to see that a hundred percent. When someone is adopting those values, you will be able to see it and it will literally radiate off of them. What I meant by, when I said you wouldn't be able to see it is more like it's not going to be a grand gesture for me to be selfless I don't have to always go with like the the restaurant you would rather eat at or the event that you would rather go to it, it's not really always going to be working through that when you're adopting that mindset it's it's going to be very apparent to you that I am like prioritizing you but it's not going to look like a grand gesture is what I'm trying to say with that um yeah it's yeah. not going to be like showboaty exactly yeah. And you will 100% be able to see it, but that's not the goal. That's where I'm yeah, going with that. Yeah, of course not. So I, I don't think that that's the reason that we should be um, adopting that mindset. But I do think that when everyone adopts that mindset, it makes for a completely different culture. And um, that's kind of like what we'll, when we'll see a change in society. So how do you think individualism, um, which is very prominent in Western culture, how do you think that affects um, this idea of selflessness? How do you think this individualistic mindset has kind of shifted what we think as selflessness. I think that individualism has everything to do with the fact that nobody and nothing ever says no to us. So we can never be in want of something and not get it. Um, this whole idea of like, if I've run out of something, I can drive to the grocery store three minutes away. Um, it's like 10 o'clock and I need something for work tomorrow. I can, it'll still be open. Um, I can go grab coffee whenever I want. I have my own car. Um, I have my own friends. Like, I have my own life. If you don't want to, like, have a relationship with me, like, that's fine. I, like, this whole idea of, like, y there's no sense of delayed gratification. We're losing our sense of discipline. There's no, like, this, this whole, like, you don't owe anyone anything. Like, focus on yourself. That's where this individualistic mindset is rooted from. So I think that the way that that differs from the way that we think is – Christianity in itself is built on the foundation of the fact that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. So literally everyone, that's going to be people you see outside of church. That's people you, that you're going to see like on the street, um, everyone that you walk past. So when you start thinking like that, you realize that like, no, I, I need to adopt everything that made me develop this individualistic mindset opposite of it. So like, um, one thing that my priest told me once was uh, a few months back was that in the old church, in the early church, 
um, confession wouldn't be between um, the person confessing and a priest. It would be um, the person confesses in front of the entire church. The entire church would listen to each other's sins. The reason being, um, community is very important in the Coptic church. And for for that person to be forgiven of, of their sin, obviously it's by God, but everyone in the church has to forgive that person because when the person sins, they're sinning against their entire mm-hmm. church. And it's because we owe each other everything whereas the western society tells you you don't owe anyone anything if you want a self-care day call out of work like stay home you don't have to answer anyone's texts it's you basically everything that you're seeing today you just have to flip it look at the opposite end of the spectrum but when you start thinking like no we're we're i owe everyone like i owe literally everyone everything like i have to start thinking like if i like break my fast during the fast with someone with me like we i go to a restaurant i order a burger she orders like a veggie burger like i have to start thinking like what is that going to tempt her like what is she going to think about that like is she going to go like get a burger tomorrow like that's kind of like the difference in those two ways of thinking um in the context of like the western society yeah and i think you you said it perfectly which is um that in in the church in the christian mindset like you owe everyone everything i kind of like that um, and I think that goes back, if you look at like Acts chapter one, chapter two, the word like the, the phrase with, with one accord yeah. is repeated so many times because it really was, everyone was just, the whole church is one body. The whole church is one being with Christ at the head. And when we really realize that and we really impl- like, uh, really put that into our daily lives where if I do something bad, like not only am I sitting against God, but I'm sitting against you, I'm sitting against mm-hmm. all these other people, then it makes us more cognizant of what we do and it forces us to be like no like i can't i can't just sit and be like oh, i'll just confess about it later because that's not how it is it's not supposed yeah. to be you know it's not just like a oh like i'll just do it and then i'll i'll, I'll deal, deal with it later because not only am i hurting myself but i'm hurting every single person around me to some degree yeah um and i think where that's manifested is with a lot of consequences of your actions like there's a lot of like um things that people will do like with certain sins that will cause them to act a certain way later. Um, for example, like if you're an alcoholic, that causes you to, you know, be a pretty angry person all the time. Well, what does that do? Well, you start getting mad at people around yeah. you. And you start, you know, doing things maybe you shouldn't be doing. But what was the root of all that? It's not that you have anger problems, that you have an alcohol problem. Mm-hmm. So the thing that's hurting you is hurting everyone around you. Yeah, I remember when I first heard that concept of like people had to confess in front of the entire church. That was like terrifying to me. I was like, what are you talking about? But now that you've put it in that context, it makes a lot more sense why you would have to do that. Yeah, and the effect it has on everyone. Because at the end of the day, whatever I do within my, you know, behind closed doors, like it affects because it sits in your mind. Yeah. You think about it. So it affects every single thing you do for the rest of the day, every single thing you do for until that's the whole point of confession is to get it off of you, to get that weight off of your heart. Yeah. So until that happens, now it's affecting every single thing you do. Right. So now that we're talking about the church and about God a little bit, why do you think selfishness is incompatible with religion in general? Not just within Christianity, but in most religions, selfishness is not compatible. Why is that? Um, I've been a Christian my whole life, so I can <laughs> well, yeah. I can speak to <laughs> Christianity. But that's um, more than like the philosophy behind <laughs> the idea of it. But that, that's fun. Um, I think that um, before I explain this answer, when you look at we talked about this a little bit on the retreat. When you look at like the law, we'll just talk about like U.S. law, like American law. A lot of what you see is has been like made illegal or has a consequence is derived from christian values like of course yeah. it's really not important to a judge whether you lie or not but that'll turn into like stealing and then that's like trespassing and like taking other people's stuff like property like whatever so that becomes like a crime if you can relate those two topics i think it'll be easier for for you to see kind of why why are those two things related so now looking at like the idea of selflessness or being selfish and being like a religious person whatever that may be don't coincide i would say that because it's because when you're a part of a religion it's going to be you and a big group of people serving whatever god so it's me and my church serving my god you can't really be like an individual in a group with a common cause and you can apply that to anything so if i'm studying for an exam with a study group with people from my class i can't 
meet up with them and kind of like do my own thing. Like we're going to collaborate. We're going to share ideas. And ultimately that's what gets me to learn the topic. Everyone knows a different little piece of information. And then we kind of piece together the whole puzzle. That, that same idea of like working collaboratively. Um, we learned this in like Sunday school when we were like five, like the church is called the body of Christ. And the analogy that they gave us was like, you're the arm, like I'm the head, someone else is the leg. We're all working together. You can't, there's like five different senses. You can't have one and not the other. So we're always taught that we need each other. And aside from the idea of selfishness, it you recognize the importance of being a team. It sounds cliche, but you are going to be a team. You're, you're with other people serving a common cause. So when you like realize the functionality of that, you'll realize that being selfish literally like deactivates that whole idea. Like you can't like work collaboratively you won't be open-minded i i think that that's why you can't be selfish in in the religious perspective if you are religious i think you're 100 percent right and then to go on with specifically christianity i think the reason why is it has to do with forgiveness and mm-hmm. repentance um you cannot forgive someone if you're selfish just they're mutually exclusive yeah. you know like if i want to like let's say like you and this person got into a fight and i'm like no, I'm gonna do what's good for me. Yeah, you're never gonna forgive them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not gonna happen. You, you're gonna block that person out. You're gonna just like, like I'm never gonna deal with them again. That's a selfish thing to do. Right. So I think within Christianity, like the concept of grace and forgiveness, is the reason why selfishness cannot even creep in to a Christian world. Um, if you're tru- truly living a life of, of a, truly living a Christian life, you have to be able to give grace, to give forgiveness, and to kind of put yourself and put your needs um not like below other people but to kind of realize that other people have to come first you know you have to be able to like you said like work with the people around you because it's the only way anything first of all will get done right but it's the only way that um you can live in that body uh with christ i think that um another way to look at it is like even if you don't understand the why there's a lot of things in our church that you kind of have to just have faith in um we don't always get the why that's like the idea of faith um just looking at the facts like the crucifixion for example like really standard example christ is the only human that was when he was incarnate was sinless right so when he died on the cross he didn't deserve any of that um the crucifixion is one of the most painful ways to um torture a person we he died for our sins like that's that's the story like we all know that um looking at that example like looking at if you're a christian looking at that example you don't really need to understand the why it's important to be selfless as a christian for other christians just looking at that like if if that was his story if that was what he did for us if that was what he sacrificed then it's kind of like white and black like cut and and dry i agree i think at the end of the day like if you're a christian you have to be forgiving you have to extend that grace because it's just what it is right so how has your mindset and behavior changed since you've kind of moved past everyone has a selfish phase so since you moved past that selfish phase of life how has that kind of changed how you act your mindset your behavior um well first of all i still struggle with it selfishness oh, is course. a sin so i can just say that like after working towards like adopting that yeah. mindset one thing that people don't really expect to see from that is everything starts to make a lot more sense like everything what do you mean by that in my interpersonal relationships um when i'm so focused on thinking about myself and when you when you have this like mindset of selfishness you assume that everyone else is thinking the same way around you so not only are you thinking all about yourself you're assuming that nobody else is like there to help you nobody else is there for you Mm -hmm. because they're also being selfish like every it's just like everyone every man for themselves basically um so living life like that and and kind of like blaming everything on others like something goes wrong it was their fault like i what am i supposed to do about that it's their problem like whatever um keep that over there i i think that now that like i've started to try to think in in a more selfless way things make a lot more sense as to why people do the things that they do have you ever like um like someone's had a really bad day your friends had a really bad day but like especially a stranger just like out in public and then they do something that like gets on your nerves or they like make a comment and and you can tell that they're having a bad day and instead of kind of like clapping back you are like i'm i'm sorry that you feel that way or like have a good day and then you see them kind of soften up and start to feel bad if you've ever been in that situation it really teaches you that 
people are dealing with things on their own and the whole idea of like hurt people hurt people is very true like no one that's content with their life no one that's not facing an issue is going to go around like wanting others to feel bad like intentionally um so like looking at that idea looking at now that i've adopted the selfless mindset um looking at my interpersonal relationships facing a conflict is doesn't even feel like an argument it doesn't even feel like a hassle you kind of just start to understand like these are when you're focused now like not on yourself the focus is outside of you these are this person's needs this is what happened that made them feel this way how can i get involved to better that and everything starts to fall into place you don't have this whole like oh my gosh like she didn't like my instagram post like i can't believe she didn't do that she was having a really bad day like i was so pretty in that like you don't you don't think like that it's just like oh like maybe i made a comment that she didn't like or like Maybe she didn't come to church today because, like, not because she was lazy or she slept in or I'm a better Christian. Probably because, like, maybe she was up late, like, helping her mom. Her mom wasn't feeling good. Like, things like that. Um, and even when you don't know the whole story, it's easier to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and assume the best. Um, that's the biggest shift that I've seen in myself. Yeah, I, th- I agree 100%. I also think um, when it comes to the kind of shift is that because you, you talked a little bit about um, these like hurt people, hurt people, and mm-hmm. how selfishness causes you to think that everyone around you thinks the same way. And I also think it causes you to think that everyone around you looks down on you. Yeah. You know, it, like selfishness, a lot of people think selflessness is putting yourself below people. I think in reality, that's what selfishness is. Selfishness is you, you're so self obsessed with yourself and you think that you're so much, like you think that you're so much more important than everyone. So you feel like everyone else. Has like is like already above you looking down on you yeah exactly instead of which most people think selfishness is you're on top and everyone's looking up at you but i think it's the opposite i think really it's like it's a lack of self-confidence it's a lack of knowing that you know no like like i'm fine i feel like and i feel like it stems from the difference between self-confidence and pride yeah where pride is like it's a want at self-confidence it's a desire to be confident in yourself and because of your lack of it you compensate for it by acting exactly like it. so i think selfishness is the same way like you want to care for others, you want because no one wakes up every morning and is like, no, I hate everyone. Like this is not human. Mm-hmm. So everyone wants to, you know, extend that arm and extend that help, but they feel like, no, like they have to, you know. So it's it's, it's like right. a comp, it's like a compensation thing. And that goes into the science of it. Like you see all of this in psychology. Like you've heard of like projection. Yeah. Um, like back to that example of like someone having a bad day that in turn they want to hurt someone else so that they can feel better about how they're feeling. Um, same idea you you project how you feel so that whole like you've heard like fake it till you make it like walk into a room with confidence even on your worst day like going into an interview you're like shaking you're so anxious you're like sweating you walk in with confidence and then people will treat you how you see yourself exactly so you could be like jeff bezos but if i come in with like i'm i look like i don't take care of myself like i wasn't ready for the day i didn't get ready i'm not wearing like nice clothes like i'm i'm not like well groomed like people are gonna treat me how i treat myself so you set your own standard um and that goes back to like if i'm thinking like i want to be selfish because people aren't giving me what i deserve people have been treating me bad i feel like i people need to be nicer to me like i have to start looking out for my own needs because of the lack of others who like didn't do that you're like and that's like the root of the problem you're going to start assuming that others feel the same way because you feel that way um but i think that's why service is so important especially like mission trips and things where it changes your entire perspective on like you like i went on a mission trip when i was um entering high school like freshman in high school um and another one last summer and when you go to these places and people who have literally nothing like the Mm -hmm. definition like you think nothing like think less than that like that's what they have and they don't they're not they're not selfish they're they don't they're perfectly content they're perfectly fine and they they're giving like they're (laughs) <laughs> they have nothing they get something they give that something yeah they back to nothing. <laughs> and it's like that's but that's their life that's how they live they're perfectly yeah. fine and you like think like of all these like first world problems you have of all these things back home that you're like you know like you think about like the week before you left for the trip all the things you complain about and you realize like that's why like selfishness is always a work in progress because yeah. you're always going to be selfish mm-hmm. at the end of the day like it's it's but it's about working against it so I think that's why that stuff is so important because you realize that no, there's there's life different than this. Just because everyone else around me is this way, or just because the world I live in has 
trained people to be selfish yeah does not mean that this is how life has to be right you know um i also think that um change is very uncomfortable and people course, yeah. would rather stay where they're at if it's a worse situation than a better situation because they're comfortable in it so like of for course. example like and that's what habitual sin is, is you're just comfortable with what you're doing right exactly and even just like your state of mind like it doesn't have to be like your physical environment yeah. i think that applying that that same idea um the process of going from a selfish mindset to a selfless mindset is it's a process like you, you it doesn't happen overnight and so. i don't think you ever achieve selflessness right i don't think you ever really this is like a stretch but yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to like intangible like values like, like stuff, exactly you never, you never like, actually achieve anything or else you would be sinless like you you really do have to, it's a struggle especially you'll meet certain people like it's a struggle <laughs> but um yeah it's it, it doesn't change the importance of it and I think that goes back to the fact that they're all tied together. Yeah. Like all of these virtues are all tied together. So you either have all of them, you got none of them. Yeah. And so. you've never met someone that has like a, a great, like radiant energy. And you can tell like, they're really, really Christ. Like they are really Christ. Like they're, they're a great Christian. Like they're better than me or whatever. And think like, they're really patient, but they could work on their like, like service. Like you, you don't think yeah, that like yeah. they all like go to the, you just say like, wow, that's a great person. Like yeah. role model example. Um, that's all I really have. So I have a couple more questions. They're kind of like wrap-up questions. But um, how do you feel that in the world we live in today? Because people always say like culture and society is a pendulum. It goes from like conservative to very liberal to very conservative. And you know how most pendulums kind of meet in the middle? Yeah. Well, people think society is the opposite where it just gets more and more extreme. So where do you think uh, in the future this idea of selflessness kind of goes? Do you think the world becomes super selfless? Do you think it stays selfish? What do you... What do you think? I think that I can see trends between different groups of people. So I, it doesn't matter like what religion you put on the table. I think that people who are religious tend to be on like the better end with those values, like not just even selflessness, like everything. And then people who are maybe like atheist or weren't introduced to a religion kind of live in a different way um, where it's harder for them to see like the better end of the spectrum um someone because well, they don't really have a light at the end of the tunnel right and they don't know any better so going back to like change is uncomfortable well how are they going to change if they don't even know like what to do so i see like trends between different populations i think with church because we kind of know where like the bar is we can like really like go astray and then come back to it because we yeah. know what's right and even if we don't come back or it takes us a while we know what's right um so i think that relating that to that analogy it really depends on like what kind of groups of people you're looking at i mean the thing about like the like atheists don't really know any better i the, the reason why i struggle to agree with that is because of the world we live in um everyone knows about christianity obviously like encountering it is one thing knowing about it is a different mm -hmm. thing completely different things however i do think that like what more do you need to to see in order to take that step Obviously, and I think that what the reason, the only reason is, is that change is a hard thing to do. Um, I also think that most atheists, because be becoming atheist is a decision. You don't oh, really like. It, just like everything in life, yeah. Yeah, but you don't like identify as an atheist because you just didn't like any of the options. You know what I mean? Yeah, you and, chose to. Yeah. Right, but to make that decision, something significant must have happened. You know what I mean? Just like something significant. I was born in the church. I was raised in the church. But at one point, I feel like this happens to all of us. At one point, once I kind of like reach adolescence, I choose my faith. So of my course, parents aren't yeah. bringing me to church anymore. I'm not kind of like just memorizing things to know it for like a Mahargan competition. Like I'm choosing that because it's what's best for me. It's what makes me like feel the best. I like know the most about this religion. Um, so to choose to be atheist something significant must have happened i think that it's usually one of two things usually they were a religious person and then a traumatic event happened and then they were like well how can god exist if this happened like to me like he would have stopped yeah. it I and mean, then they become atheist or also <laughs> like they, they <laughs> like the second thing is like they think the law is enough like i have the yeah, law i'm a i'm a more was, like yeah, good yeah. person like yeah i don't need a religion well, which is why I, I i say i think like saying like oh they don't know better like well they have like there's laws like right. they do know better you know they do know what's right and wrong but uh, uh, to some extent i feel like they still don't know better because if you if you like because of an event like chose to become atheist like a bad event i i don't think you know enough about christ to be like well, specifically i feel like that comes from more of a theological thing when it comes to the judgmental versus the, 
the f- gracious part of God's character. Um, but they don't know that. They, they're they not able to differentiate. That's why I say they don't. Because I think certain, certain denominations of Christianity have changed the theological weights of those two aspects of God's character. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. I can get, see that. Yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> let's not get um, into that. But I just have a kind of a little bit of an off-topic question. Yeah. But it relates. Do you think people are born with the ability to know right from wrong? Or do you think it's a learned behavior? I think that it's a learned behavior. Okay. I think we have certain instincts, but I think that it's a learned behavior. Hmm. I, well, I think there's obviously some things that are like, for example, like tax fraud is a learned behavior. Because <laughs> tax is made up. So okay. like, it has to be learned. Like, um, you can't be born. Like you don't, you're not born in knowing tax. But I think you can like, because I, I think the way how you have to look at what's intrinsically right and wrong is you look at what, you look at animals. Can animals differentiate anything that's right and wrong? Animals have feelings. So if they have feelings, they can feel a certain way towards certain things. So you can analyze what that, I was saying, I'm not really, really not researched it. But I'm, I'm sure for a lot of species of more developed animals, mm-hmm. killing another animal of the same species is instinctly not um, a positive thing, you know? I can also argue that they they've learned that though. It might have been at a really young age, but you don't like they probably I mean, I think saw learned, like learned like evolutionary behavior like through like microevolution is one thing versus like after being born. After being born. Yeah. I think the microevolution of learning things I think is kind of what I'm talking about, but you're being born with something. Yeah. I can see both sides. For example, um like I I mean I don't know enough about this topic, but I know that there are certain species of animals that will eat their babies. And that can't be like, (laughs) you can't have a good feeling about that. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? So like looking at things like that, or like, for example, even just with humans, um, people born in different cultures, we have like very different ideas of like, what's okay. Like, for example, like, yeah, of course. Like I, there's certain animals I'm not comfortable eating. I do think there's like, I do think there's like, um, with very extreme cultures, there's like a, there's certain brainwashing you can do to kind of remove that instinct. And how you do that is you convince them the instinct is wrong. But I think at the end of the day, you're born with that instinct of right. I see what you're saying. On a very, I mean, on a very general sense of what's right and wrong. Can I ask you something? Sure. Where do you think that comes from? The instinct. Oh, it comes from God. It's because it's divinely woven into us. Okay. But obviously, evolutionists wouldn't agree. But that's just I can see both I sides. Think. I can see both. I mean, obviously, I, I think there's smaller things micro evolved. Like fire is good. Yeah. You know, you're, humans were not created with fire because yeah. they didn't <laughs> hunt together. <laughs> yeah, fires just didn't exist. Yeah. You know. Um, but I think like. Um, just a general idea of moral good and wrong mm-hmm. is directly woven into our beings. Okay. I think it's what that gut feeling is. I can see that. I mean, I think the only way to test that is to get someone who can remember like everything since the day they were born to like, know, well, yeah, like and that's where they possible, were. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I, I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I think from a Christian perspective, that's kind of what we believe because that gut feeling mm-hmm. is either a nudge from the Holy Spirit or it is the Holy Spirit. So what would you say about people who are never baptized? It's a nudge because the Holy Spirit still works. It's just not in you. It can still work right. to you. Right? You can still, yeah. for example, like the prophets when they wrote the books, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them, but mm-hmm. they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So how that happened? They had that nudge, you know? Yeah. So I think it's the same thing. Um, obviously, not to that extent, they're not writing whole books in the Bible, but I think that the Holy Spirit works through other people to other people. You know, like I'll say like, completely off topic, but we talked about parents earlier. I think the way God talks to you the most is through your parents. Yeah. Obviously, that's not your Holy, that's not like the Holy Spirit inside of me. It's the same Holy Spirit, but it's not like, it's not my gut feeling, but I'm getting talked, it's, it's an external factor telling me what God has to say. It's like looking in a so mirror. Same, same idea, you mm-hmm. know? Like, it don't, I can be atheist, I can be not baptized, I can be whatever, but I can still have that feeling that God is talking to me. Right. Like St. Moses the Black, when he looked up at the sun and said, Oh, son, reveal yourself as the God. And God spoke to him from heaven. So it's the same idea. Yeah. Have you have you heard like that idea that like God is always reaching out? Like he's always reaching 110%, out. 110%. And like you just mind. have to like, yeah, like quiet down the noise. I think yeah. that. Like I'll say like, same I've, idea. I heard this multiple times and I've said it a lot, but listening for God's voice is a completely different topic. But listening for God's voice is like, it's almost like imagine you're in a room and there's just puzzle pieces everywhere on the floor. Yeah. Hiding different places. They're there. The, the voice is there. The puzzle pieces are there. But you have to go and pick them up and put right. them together. You have to make that picture. So it's the same idea. Like God talks to you 
throughout your day, all the time, no matter what, through a billion things. It's up to you if you want to hear it or not. It's up to you if you want to put it together or not. Yeah. You know, because we have free will. Completely different. That's topic. a lot of different, <laughs> yeah, like topics in one. To be selfless. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's all I have. Anything else you want to say? Um, no, I think we summarized it pretty well. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Julie, for coming on the podcast. Thanks. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. See you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you.